Narciss is really good at pressing your buttons and triggering you to do different things, to get you emotional, to get you to a place where they can flip it around on you of like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you screaming at me? I'm just here trying to like all this stuff, trying to make you feel like you're the crazy one. Are you at the place where you feel like everything becomes a constant battle, like an argument, like you're constantly getting attacked by the person in your life, by a toxic person, by your partner, whoever it might be. You might be the place where you're getting caught off guard all the time, not knowing how to respond when the narcissist attacks you. Maybe you feel the place where you're like helpless and powerless in dealing with this narcissistic person. And like want to be able to talk through some of the things of how to be able to stand your ground when you're being attacked when you're dealing with that toxic person. Now, a couple side notes I wanna make, make known really quick. Okay, first off, this isn't a way to be able to say, hey, we're gonna do this and everything's going to be perfectly fine. Please take this with a grain of salt because I want you to be careful. First and foremost, you're dealing with a toxic person and a lot of times those people can get to the place of physical violence. So please be careful anytime you're dealing with a toxic person. You might be in the place where you're like, I want to stand up. I know I can, but I also like want to make sure that I'm safe. Focus on the safety. Focus on getting out of the relationship. Okay, but some people want to hear the answer to this question, so we're going to dive into it a little bit today. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse, what it looks like, how it shows up, how it's demonstrated, how I've demonstrated it in my life, and also to bring about not just awareness, but healing help people understand how they can heal from it, how they can grow, how they can change ultimately the story that they believe, rewire their mindset to get out of the trauma bond, get away from the rumination, and get to a place where they're developing and thriving moving forward. If you want to reach out and you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to rawmotivations.com. would love to help you in your journey of healing and to join some of our communities to get free mentally, emotionally, and physically from that toxic person. Well, in your, when you're in the relationship and you're dealing with it, I want to discuss how you can actually stand your ground when being attacked by a toxic person and a narcissist. We're gonna explore some of the practical tips and strategies to help you see when, what's going on when they attack you to be able to move in a healthy and effective way for you. Okay, first and foremost, we've talked about this multiple times before, but I wanna bring it up because it needs to be said, is to establish boundaries. Now, most people do not have boundaries in their relationships, period. A lot of times people don't have relationships in the, the relationship with a toxic person that they actually even hold on to or they actually even are consistent with. You need to first understand that a boundary is for you. It is not for the other person. If it's for the other person, then it's rules, it's regulations, all those type of things. A boundary is for you to say, hey, I'm going to limit what I'm exposed to. I'm gonna limit your access to me based on the toxicity that you present on a day-to-day -day basis. And so when you're dealing with a narcissist, you have to establish clear boundaries. Now, a narcissist is going to push back on them, okay? I would always push back on my wife's boundaries or other people's boundaries because it wasn't what I wanted. I was like, you're controlling me. When in reality, they were just saying like, no, I don't like that. This isn't what I want. This is how I want you to actually show up in the relationship. And I didn't care about that. All I did is care about me. Okay, but when you set boundaries, you start to communicate to the narcissist of like, hey, this is what's going on. You can do whatever you want to do, but it's not going to be with me. This is the part where people get confused. They're like, well, I don't want him to keep cheating on me. I don't want him to do this. And you're trying to control and modify the other person. That's not your job. Your job is to work on you. Your job is to develop you on a day-to-day -day basis. So what that looks like is like, hey, if you want to go out and you want to cheat and you want to sleep with a bunch of women, go for it by all means. Just know that when you come home, it's no longer going to be to me because I'm not going to be in a relationship that chooses to do that. See the difference? You're not telling them they can't do the things. You're just saying, hey, if you want to do that, you can, but it's not going to be with me. And then when they do that, when they cheat, then you're at the place where you're like, okay, and you're out. The problem that a lot of people have with establishing clear boundaries is one, they're typically not clear. And then two, they typically don't follow through. Okay, so typically what would happen is the narcissist would go out and cheat and come back and be like, oh yeah, I cheated on you. And then the other person would be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to start packing my bags and leave. The narcissist is like, no, please don't leave. Like, I'm sorry, I'll change, all this kind of stuff. And then you stay. Soon as you stay, the narcissist knows at that, point, at that point, your word doesn't mean anything. So as a result, he knows he can do it over and over and over again, and nothing's going to change. This is why it's important to set clear boundaries and then follow through. Most people say boundaries don't work with a narcissist. Boundaries don't work when you don't enforce them. That's the, only th that's the only difference. The thing is with a healthy person, boundaries work because you enforce them and the other person responds and respects you. With a narcissist, they don't. 
So as a result, you have to up the end. You have to move forward in the consequences of what you're going to do for you and your life to protect yourself and to help people from trauma. So you have to understand boundaries, okay? They're for you, they're not for the toxic person. You have to establish these by being clear, by being direct and showing like, hey, this is not what I'm gonna tolerate in my life and following through, big thing follow through. If you don't follow through, don't even bother setting the boundary. Like you need to understand this. Okay. Otherwise it won't matter. Think of this aspect of like, Hey, narcissist, uh, he's in your life and he's constantly interrupting you, talking over you, like fixing the problem and not giving you space to actually even express what you're, what you're going through, your emotions, your feelings. And you just kind of step back and you'll be like, wait a second. Like, I'm not going to continue this conversation. If you continue to interrupt me, like if you want to talk, you can, you can talk, but I'm not going to have this conversation with you. So you see, there's like nuances here that you need to be understand. Anyway, so that's boundaries, okay? So that makes sense. The second one that most people are not able to do when you're in a toxic environment is stay calm. Now, a huge part with this of staying calm is really hard for people because the narcissist is trying to trigger you. Like that is the whole goal. Think of it this way. My wife and I, we used to get into arguments where we would argue about something in particular and I knew I just had to get her riled up enough so I could disprove her argument because when she would get so flustered and she would get so frustrated, she would end up saying stuff that wasn't 100% accurate. Not lying, but like in the moment of like, I can't believe you said that or I can't believe you showed up at this time and it'd be like a minute off or it'd be something different and that's when I would step in and be like, ha, see, I didn't do that. You said I did that. You like Then you try to poke holes in her argument. Her argument was sound until I got her to the place where she was riled up, where she couldn't think straight. And then at that point, I was able to like push her to the side and be like, see, here's the problem. You're the problem. You made this, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so you need to understand a narcissist is gonna do this to you time and time again. And so you have to stay calm. They're like, I don't even know how to stay calm. Like this isn't, this isn't possible, okay? Part of it's not possible in the moment because you're getting constantly triggered by trauma. The other part that makes it very difficult is when you're around that person, that constant triggering will keep activating emotions and keep activating stories, limiting beliefs that tell you how to respond, that tell you how to act. These are one of the things that we work on eradicating for people is the trigger that's controlling you because the narcissist isn't controlling you. Mm, Some people are gonna be like, wait a second, what did you say? The narcissist isn't controlling you. The narcissist is triggering you, which is controlling you. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a I just I'm gonna make a whole nother video about this, okay? Because it's very, very true. The narcissist does stuff that triggers you, which produces the story that you tell yourself, which controls how you act and controls what you do. A narcissist is really good at pressing your buttons and triggering you to do different things, to get you emotional, to get you to a place where they can flip it around on you of like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you screaming at me? I'm just here trying to like all this stuff, trying to make you feel like you're the crazy one. And it's important to stay calm when you're dealing with a narcissist and dealing with another thing, dealing with just the facts. The facts of the situation are the only thing you can even try to bring to the table. Like you're not going to be able to argue with them in an emotional way because they're not going to engage with you emotionally. They're going to disconnect. They're going to compartmentalize. They're going to shove it to the side. When you engage emotionally, they're like, oh, got her weakness. I can figure this out. I can actually twist and manipulate that emotion so I can get what I want. So you have to be really careful. Being really calm and dealing with just the facts, not bringing any emotion into it. Super hard. Now, I'm not saying be devoid of emotion. I'm just saying when you talk to this person, you have to channel the energy and what you're communicating and how you're communicating it different, okay? If you're emotional and highly emotional and strong in that way, they're gonna use that against you. So take deep breaths, focus in your body, try to remain centered, but what you really have to work on is the triggers. Those are the things we dive into inside the Clarity Challenge, inside working with us one-on-one inside the Thriver community, okay? So th- think of it this way, like if a narcissist is yelling at you, trying to get a reaction out of you, you can say like, hey, I can see you're upset but I'm not gonna respond until you can communicate with me in a respectful manner. So like there, there has to be like this boundary that you put, but then there also has to be like, hey, like I see this is what's going on. Now, for some of you watching that, like what I just like talk through, hey, I can see you're upset, but I won't respond until you can communicate with me in a respectful manner. Part of that starts going into gentle parenting, respectful parenting. Uh, what is it? No, authoritative parenting, not authoritarian. But like the idea of like training the kids to actually process emotions and work through it. You, you almost have to do that with a narcissist of like, hey, I get it, but we're not going to talk about this until you can actually communicate me in a, in a respectful way. So you continue moving through that way. Okay. All right. Number three. I'm using I statements. 
So this is a little bit different, but you need to understand like when you're constantly saying, you do this, you do this, you do this, it's always gonna be an attack, okay? Now, I'm not saying that he didn't do that, okay? Because I know he did that, okay? So I, I see that, but the thing is, I statements show a completely different like phrase and a completely different structure, okay? The narcissist is gonna view you attacking him anyways, no matter what you say, okay? Honest, like you, you can say it really nice, you can say it really mean, still gonna be an attack. What you wanna be able to do is just focus on I statements, okay? This is how I feel. This is what I see. This is what has been demonstrated to me. Like those kind of things because then it helps you be in control of your emotions and there's also not something he can say of like, oh, you're just attacking me. He will say that, but just like try to keep it in-house. It makes it a little bit easier to be able to process and be able to work through. Okay, last one I wanna bring up, because uh, we're running out of time, is don't engage in the arguments. Okay, narcissists love to argue and to engage in like a power struggle of like, oh, I'm gonna one up you, I'm gonna make sure that like I win and this, like don't engage. Okay, with this, be careful. Sometimes this can ramp up violence or physical abuse because they're getting pissed off because you're not engaging. But when a narcissist is like, I'm a victim, this is what's going on, all this kind of stuff, and you're like, okay, sure, I can see that. All right, I'll think about that. Hmm and you start to gray rock, that becomes a big piece of like, okay, they're noticing that they're not gonna get a reaction out of you. They're used to manipulating and twisting the words that you have to make themselves look good and to make you look bad. And so it's important to recognize when an argument is not worth your time or your energy and to just disengage from it. Be like, okay, you know what's true. The problem is the narcissist has gotten into your head so much that you begin to doubt yourself. If you're at the place where you're like doubting yourself and you're like, I don't know, am I the narcissist? What's actually going on? You can either talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to rawmotivations.com, we can set up a time, be able to talk, help give you solutions, answers to the questions and the confusion that you're going through. Or if you're like, I don't know if I wanna to talk to him yet or if I'm at that place, then to go to escapetoxicity.com. The links will be down below for you to be able to engage with our seven day challenge for $7. It gives you access, lifetime access to a community, starts you down the process of understanding the healing process of working through, are you the narcissist, reactive abuse, the guilt you're dealing with, what about uh, the trauma bond, all those pieces are stuffed inside there. Links down below. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys next time.